David Howard's Art Scene. Being an artist, you're a fairly uh, sensitive person, and the art world is very insensitive. So, uh, actually, as I get older, I take a lot of it less personal, and I'm getting a lot more callous. You kind of have to have an iron shield around you uh, because you're constantly, you know, you put yourself out there, and, and you feel very, very close to what you do, and then people, you know, respond to it in lots of different ways, and it's not always the way you want the response to be. Uh, but, I don't know, the world's not perfect either, you know what I mean? Alnaldi's studio was huge. He had several people working for him at one time. He had roll-up garage doors. He even had his own swim lane. It was only one lane wide and really long. The inside was equally as huge. He had his own galleries. He had his own offices. It was an indoor-outdoor environment. With the doors open, you were equally outside as you were in. You turn 40 and you decide that a lot of things that were important to you when you're 25 are not so important when you're 40. Such as? Oh you know, all the uh, involvement with the big uh, peer group thing and all the talking and arguing and the drinking and the openings and the, all that stuff is not, I mean, I still do a little bit of that, but uh, that's not near as exciting to me as uh, having a nice place to work, a lot of time and, and uh, availability materials and stuff like that. The idea that uh, I can leave the doors open and work inside or outside pretty much year round is very important.
There's a lot more people, there's a lot more interest in art, and one of the things that I think is essential to making art is an audience. And because, after all, people don't make all this stuff just to be thrown into a vacuum somewhere. So when there's an audience and a critical eye, and people really, uh, once they get more sophisticated about looking at stuff and evaluating things, it, it forces people to, to work harder, try harder. Arnaldi uses a chainsaw like other artists use brushes. He takes a large piece of plywood, four by eight feet, to make pavings which are sometimes over 10 by 20 feet in its final dimension. He laminates the plywood together, making up to six to eight inches deep, painting whichever abstract design he wants on it. Later on, he'll transport the work to the adjacent courtyard and with his collections of chainsaws, cut out whichever areas he doesn't want to be included in the finished product. I see Arnaldi's work as a process of elimination or a study in subtraction. Painting like this is not only dangerous, it's physically very demanding and I can, now I'm 40, I'm in pretty good shape. I, I enjoy it, I can do it, but uh, you know, I want to be doing stuff when I'm 85, so uh, I can have all kinds of ideas about what I'd like to be doing. Now, whether or not I'll be doing it, I have no idea. But I, if, if I could have a crystal ball and tell now, I, I would, you know, it would be a, a real uh, a great thing to be able to see in the future, you know. Then uh, I could get started on it today and I wouldn't have to wait 10 years to get there, 20 or 30, because I anticipate getting better. Uh, no, I don't know what better means, but somehow in my mind I see it as that I'm, you know, I keep thinking that I guess that's what the drive is, that the next thing will be right, that it'll be closer to the source or, you know, in some way better. And I'm just trying to live that, you know. This is a sectional piece of one of the completed chainsaw works. Chuck would work in various mediums in order to appease his creative endeavors. He would jump from one to the other, satisfying his aesthetic needs for the day. For me, when I look at paintings, somehow I can walk through the Louvre and when I'm looking at the paintings, I'm never concerned about the painting I'm looking at and the people in the painting. I'm always concerned somehow with the artist behind the painting. And, um, uh, you know, that's the way I perceive those guys. And, they, and it's because I get excited and I get turned on and I can see that they carry this idea of art, whatever that is, on.
it takes me to a different state of, of mental consciousness, something that, get, that in a sense excites me or gets me stimulated. Whatever, I, whatever that, that is, I'm not sure, but to, you can make paintings or sculptures a means to transport you into this, into this other kind of idyllic state of mind. So what you're, you know, in, in things, it's, uh, you're using uh, pretty primitive methods of doing that, you know, line, uh, illusions, shape, volume, and a lot of the work that I've been using, I use a, a linear drawing approach in a sense. So this is, uh, uh, it's drawing in, in, in three-dimensional space, but it's also about the space and the illusion and the shapes in between the lines. So Chuck, what's going on here? Well, actually what we're doing, we're making some uh, steel braces we're going to put on a painting and we're thinking we're going to play around with uh, freestanding a painting. I made this room so that I could look at things that I thought were pretty much done. I find it's helpful for me if I construct something out in the back in the welding room or in the other studio. It's sort of nice to take it out of that environment, put it someplace else where I can sort of zero in on the work. There's so much other activity going on in all the, in the studios that a lot of times you can't see something clearly. So I'll bring pieces in here. This was Arnaldi's finishing room. He also called it his testing room to determine if he was satisfied with the work or not. He'd live with it for a while and decide later if it was completed. If I do the same thing over and over again, I get very good at it, and then it, it becomes... I like spontaneity, and, and I like to be naive and uh, kind of let uh, chance and, and, and uh, excitement rule things. And if I do the same thing over and over again for hours or weeks on end, then I get to be very slick at it, and I think it, it, it takes away the, uh, the real honest energy in it. So I jump around from one type of thing to the other, and. Uh, that way a lot of times I can look over my shoulder at something that I started a week or two ago 
and see it out of the corner of my eye and I get a fresh look at it and I determine whether it, you know, what I like or don't like about it, if it's successful, if it needs to be changed or if it should be destroyed or whatever. So a lot of the hours in the studio are just kind of walking around looking, thinking. never tell you why I make certain pieces, although I create a little uh, excitement or a little uh, scenario in my head that's sort of a, a stimulating little story and then I create a piece to go with it. Now once the piece is done, I don't care about the story anymore or what the circumstances where it created it, you know, I mean it just exists. Now the thing is, hopefully, I'll have put some energy into this piece that stimulates other people when they look at it. Now their response is obviously not going to be what I intended. I don't, you don't set out to explain the world by making pieces of art. There seems to be a real attitude with younger artists, and I think it's because the idea that art's sort of become a profession, that, uh, that they're very focused on art as a career. And uh, I don't think, I mean, I guess it would have infected uh, me and the people in school when I was there about very concerned about how your life was going to be if you pursued this idea of being an artist. But now uh, everybody's very interested in the professional career aspects of art, I think. And uh, the market seems to be very important. There's a lot of talk about market and stuff. But art itself, I think that uh, art's not very democratic. It's very difficult. There's only very few people who are really any good. And I think that. Uh, Art is, is more about uh, one person's lifetime. It's like uh, Mother Nature can always make a bigger diamond, but there'll never be another Picasso painted. You know, when Picasso died, that was the end of the road. So what we do, we look at Picasso in terms of what he accomplished in a lifetime, the quality of the individual aspect of what made Picasso unique, and his art is unique because he made it. And so uh, uh, art is, is always going to be the same. It's just that the focus now has been altered a little bit because of the notoriety of the marketplace and fast careers and, and who's showing with what gallery and all that stuff. But all that stuff, it, uh, you know, it comes and it goes. But uh, whatever makes certain people stand out in history, I think uh, whatever that is, that hasn't changed at all. I think Vermeer and Van Gogh and Gauguin and all those people are still the, the best ones, you know. And, uh, and I'm sure that if some of those people exist today. We, we won't know who those people are for another 40, 50 years. You've got to let all the fad and everything else wash out. And I don't know it's, what motivates you to make the actual stuff I, I don't know it's I know one thing though is that it's never it's never um, an attainable thing it's always in front of me I'm always uh, seems like I'm a good six months or a year behind myself I work off of ideas that I get and then trying to bring those things into reality you know, always there's a lag behind so you never actually attain what you're after the goals are always fleeting which is kind of nice that's I consider making art is an experimental process and you just uh, you're constantly trying to work out an idea you, know, you start out to do something and every time you do something it suggests unlimited possibilities variations and things or you see as it becomes real you realize the possibilities in that 
And so my desire is usually to start the next one. I'm always more excited about what I'm going to do than what I've done. Instead of using tree branches like natural found elements I cast in bronze, I'm finding some that there's some really interesting shapes that are man-made in a foundry that are actually uh, uh, part of the casting process, which they usually cut off of the finished product and remelt down to get the metal back again. But I found some pretty interesting shapes uh, that I've been using, like this is gating material, and I uh, it's really quite nice if I, if I try to set out to make something this spontaneous and ugly, I probably couldn't do it. I really like art and uh you know, I'm constantly in search of something that's, that excites me, too. I mean, I just, I, when I was younger, I used to get a real thrill out of seeing art shows. You know, I can remember this big rush of enthusiasm or whatever when I saw shows, and that happens less and less frequent now. And so, uh, I always have, an, you know, an ear to the ground to, to find out what's going on, what people are talking about. I have ideas I get in my mind. They're very clear, and uh, you know I don't know where or why they come, but there's usually some extension from the last things I've been doing. So then I try to uh, make that become reality. So I set to work on this thing, and uh, uh, and then I'll get another idea, and I keep intending. I, I don't really keep uh, notebooks and sketchbooks. I mean, occasionally I do a little sketch or something. Most everything I do is like real. I, mean, I think that a little sketch, a little gouache, a watercolor, an oil painting, or change something, everything, no matter what the scale of it is, or anything, nothing has more significance than another thing. I just finished a 25-foot painting and I, uh, about a week ago, 10 by 25 feet, which is pretty big, but it didn't really have any more importance to me when I was making it than a little 3 by 4 inch gouache. And, uh, so anyway, what I'm saying is I get these images and then it takes me a certain amount of time to, to do them. Uh, so I'm lagging behind a couple of months or maybe up to a year. But the thing is, I, I don't have any idea what I'm going to do in five years. I have lots of kind of hopes. There's a lot of people getting an incredible amount of attention. And I'm not sure all the attention is really good because sometimes it puts them on the spot and they feel like they have to perform in public. and adds pressure to them to maintain the position that's being put on them. And in a funny way, it gives, it's a real disservice to certain artists. But, uh, but then the other, you know, the deal is that, uh, that uh, all that stuff is irrelevant. You know, either you uh, make good art and survive or you don't.
David Howard's art scene.